theCUBE's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies. Creating technologies that drive human progress. All right, welcome back to the FIDA in Barcelona. This is Dave Vellante with Dave Nicholson. Day four of coverage, MWC 23. We've been talking all week about the disaggregation of the telco networks, how telcos need to increase revenue, how they're not going to let the over-the-top providers do it again. They want to charge Netflix, right? <laughs> and Netflix is punching back. There maybe are better ways to do revenue acceleration. We're going to talk to that topic with Dave Trigg, who's the global vice president of telecom systems business at Dell Technologies, and Ken Burns, who's a global telecom partner sales lead. Guys, good to see you. Good welcome. to see you, great to, to be well. here. Thank Dave, you for being here. Dave, Thank you heard my, here. you're welcome, you heard my intro. There's got to be better ways to, for the telcos to make money. How can they accelerate revenue beyond taxing Netflix? Yeah, well, well first of all, sort of the promise of 5G, and a lot of people talk about 5G as the enterprise G, right? So the promise of 5G is to really help drive revenue, enterprise use cases, and so it's sort of the promise of the next generation of technology, but it's not easy to figure out how we monetize that. And so we think Dell has a pretty significant role to play. It's a CEO conversation for every telco and how they accelerate. And so it's an area, we're investing heavily into three different areas for telcos. One is the IT space. Dell's done that forever. 90% of the company's leaning in on that. The other place is network. Network's more about cost takeout. And the third area where we're investing in is working with what we call their line of businesses, but it's really their business units, right? How can we sit down with them and really understand what services do they take to market? Um, where do they go? So we're making significant investments. So one way they can do it is working with Dell. And, and we're making big investments, because in most geos, we have a fairly uh, significant sales force. We've brought in an industry leader to help us put it together, and we're getting very focused on this space, and uh, you know, looking forward to talking more about it. So Ken, you know the space inside and out. We just had AT&T on, yep. and they were saying, we have to be hypersensitive because of our platinum brand to the use of personal information. Yeah. So we're not going to go there yet. We're right. not going to go directly monetize it, but yet I'm thinking, well, Netflix knows what I'm watching, and they're making right. recommendations, and, they're, and, that, and that's how they make money, and so the, the telcos are, are shy about doing that for right, right reasons. But they want to make better offers, they want to put, it, put forth better bundles, you know, they, don't, they don't, don't want to spend all their time trying to figure that out and not being able to change when they need to change. So, so what is the answer? If they're not going to go toward that direct monetization of data, yeah. how do they get there? <laughs> so I, uh, I joined Dell in, at the end of June and brought on, as David said, to, to build and lead this, what we call the line of business strategy, right? And ultimately, what it is is tying together uh, Dell technology solutions and the best of breed of what the telecoms bring to bear to solve the business outcomes of our joint customers. And there's a few jewels inside of Dell. One of it is that um, we have 35,000 sellers out there, all touching enterprise uh, business customers. And we have a really good understanding of what those customer needs are and you know, what their outcomes needs to be. The other jewel is, uh, we have a really good understanding of how to solve those business outcomes. Uh, Dell is an open company. We work with thousands of integrators and uh, we have a really good insight in terms of how to solve those business outcomes, right? And so in my conversations with the telecom companies, when you talk about you know, combining the best assets of Dell with their capabilities, and we're all talking to the same customers, right? And if we're giving them the same story on these solutions, solving business outcomes, it's a beautiful thing. It's a time to market. What's an example of a, of a, of a situation where you'll partner with telcos that's going to drive revenue for, for both of you and value for the customer? Yeah, great question. So we've been laser focused on four key areas. Cyber, well let me start with connected laptops, cyber, private mobility, and edge. Right? Now the last two are a little bit squishy, but I'll, I'll get to that in a bit, right? Because Ultimately, I feel like with this 5G market, we could actually make the market. And the way that we've been positioning this is almost, uh, almost on a journey for IOT. Um, when we talk about laptops, right, Dell is the, is the number one company in the world to sell business laptops. Well, if we start selling connected laptops, the telcos are starting to say, well, you know what? If all of those laptops get connected to my network, that's a ton of 5G activations, right? 
we have the use cases on why having a connected workforce makes sense, right? So we're sharing that with the telcos to not simply sell a laptop, but to sell the company on why it makes sense to have that connected workforce. Why does it make sense? Well, you know, is the it, end customer. Yeah, so you know, um, I'm probably not the best to answer that one, right? But, but ultimately, you know, Dell is selling millions and millions of laptops out there. And, and again, the Verizon, the ATT, the Teamos, they're seeing the opportunity that you know, connecting those laptops give those the 5G activations, right? But Dave, you know, the way that we've been positioning this is, it's not simply a laptop could be really a Trojan horse into this IOT journey, because ultimately, if you sell a thousand laptops to an enterprise company, and you're connecting a thousand of their employees, you're connecting people, right? And we can give the analytics around that, what, what they're using it for, you know, making sure that the security, the BIOS, all of that is up to date. So now that you're connecting their people, you could open up the conversation to, why don't we connect your place? And you know, allowing the telecom companies to come in and educate customers, and the Dell Salesforce on why a private 5G mobility network makes sense to connecting places, that's a great opportunity. When you connect the place, the next part of that journey is connecting things in that place. Robotics, sensors, et cetera, right? And, uh, and so really, so we're on this journey of people, places, things. So you got the cyber angle in there, David. That's, the, that's, that's, that's a very connected. clear benefit. If you, you know, if you got all these bespoke laptops and they're all at different levels, you're going to get, you know you're going to get hacked anyway. You're That's just right. You're going to get hacked worse. Yeah, I'm curious, as you go to market, do you see significant differences? You don't have to name any names, but I imagine that there are behemoths that could be laggards because essentially they feel like they're the toll booth and all they have to do is collect, keep collecting the tolls. Whereas some of the smaller, more nimble, more agile entities that you might deal with might be more receptive to this message. That seems to be the sort of way, the circle of life. Are, are you seeing that? Are you seeing the big ones? Are you seeing the, you know, the aircraft carriers realizing that we got to turn into the wind, guys, and if we don't start turning into the wind now, we're going to be in trouble. So this conference has been absolutely fantastic, allowing us to speak with you know, probably 30 plus telecom operators around this strategy, right? And all of the big guys. They've invested hundreds of billions of dollars in their 5G network and they haven't really seen the ROI. So when we're coming into them with a story about how Dell can help monetize their 5G network, I got to tell you, they're pretty excited about it. So they're receptive. It. Oh my God, they are very receptive hey, to That's it. the big question, right? I mean, is who's, anybody ever going to make any money off of 5G? And Ken, you were saying that private mobility and edge are a little fuzzy, but I, I mean, from a strategy standpoint, I mean, that is a potential gold mine. Yeah, but it, for, for a lot of the telcos, or most telcos, it's a pretty significant shift in mentality, um, right? Because they are used to selling SIM cards to some degree, and how many SIM cards are they selling, and how many, what other use cases? And really to get to the point where they understand the use case, because to get into the enterprise, to really get into what can they do to help power a enterprise business um, more wholly, They've got to understand the use case. They got to understand the full, more complete solution. You know, Dell's been doing that for years, and that's where we can bring our sales force, our capabilities, um, our understanding of the customer. Because even your original question around AT and T and trying to understand the data, that's just really a, how do you get better understanding of your customer? Right. You absolutely. Know? And and combined, we're better together because we bring a more complete picture of understanding our customers, and then how can we help them understand what the edge is? Because nobody's ever bought an edge, right? They're buying an edge to get a business outcome. You know, back in the day, nobody ever bought a data lake, right? Like, right. you know, they're buying an outcome. They want to use that data lake or they want to use the edge to deliver something. They want to use 5G. And 5G has very real capabilities. It's got intrinsic security, which, you know, a lot of the Wi-Fi doesn't. Um, it's got um, guaranteed uh, on time, you know, for areas where you can't lose connectivity, uh, autonomous vehicles, et cetera. Um, so it's got very real capabilities that helps deliver that outcome, but you got to be able to translate that into the en enterprise language to help them solve a problem, and that's where we think we need the help of the telcos. I think the telcos, we can help them as well and, and really go drive that outcome. So Dell's bringing its go-to-market expertise and its technology. The telcos obviously have the, the connectivity piece and what they do. There's no overlap in terms of the, yeah. the, the equipment and yep. the software that you're selling. I yep. mean, you're, they're going to they're gonna take your equipment and create new networks, beautiful, um, and, and it's interesting, you like to think about how Dell has transformed. Prior to EMC, Dell was you know, a PC maker with a subpar enterprise business, 
right? And kind of a wannabe enterprise business. Sorry, Dell, it's the truth. <laughs> and then EMC was largely, you know, companies sold storage boxes, but you own VMware. And then you brought those two together. Now all of a sudden you had Dell, powerhouse leader, and Michael Dell. You had VMware, incredibly strategic and important. And you had an EMC with amazing go to market. All of a sudden, this Dell, Dell Technologies became incredibly attractive to CIOs, C-level executives, board level, and you've come out of that transition. Well, you know, VMware is now a separate company, right. and now, but now you have these relationships, and you got the shops to be able to go into these edge locations, yep. edge companies, yep. and actually go partner with the telcos, yep. and you got a very compelling value proposition. Well, it's been interesting as, in, in this show again. Most telcos think of Dell as a server provider, you know, important, but not overly strategic in their journey. But as we've started to invest in this business, we've started to invest in things like automation, we've brought together things in our infra blocks, and then we help them develop revenue. We're not only helping them take costs out of their network, we're not we're helping them take risk out of deploying that network, we're helping them accelerate the deployment of that network, and then we're helping them drive revenue. We are having, you know, they're starting to see us in a new light, not done yet, but you know you can start to see one how they're looking at Dell, and two, and then how we can go to market. And you know a big part of that is yeah. helping them drive and generate revenue. Yeah. Well, as as a, as a former EMC person myself, yeah, uh, I will assert that that strategic DNA was injected into Dell by the acquisition of, uh, <laughs> of EMC, and I'm sticking. I'm sti I, I won't say that. I'm, sti okay, I'm, I'll, I'll I'm believe sticking. You on that. I'm sticking. I'm, sticking I'm sticking with the story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes, it makes I mean, sense when you think about okay. moving up market. That's yep. the natural thing. What's, yep. what's what's nearly impossible is to say we sell semi trucks, but we want to get into the personal pickup truck market. That's that that doesn't work. Yep. Going the other way works. Yeah. Now, now back to the conversation that you had with, uh, with, with AT&T. I'm not buying this whole, uh, no offense to AT&T, but I'm not buying this whole story that, you know, oh, we're concerned about our brand and customer data. That sounds like someone who's a little bit too comfortable with their existing revenue stream. Um, if I'm out there, I want to be out partnering with po folks who are truly aggressive about, about coming up with the next cool thing. You guys are talking about being connected in a laptop. Someone would say, well, I got Wi-Fi. No, 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 I'm thinking, I want a SIM in my laptop because yeah. I don't want to screw around with Wi-Fi. Yep. Okay, fine, if I know I'm going to be somewhere with excellent Wi-Fi connectivity, great. But most of the time, it's not excellent. Yep. That's right. So the idea that I could maybe hit F2 and have it switch over to my SIM and know that anywhere that I've got coverage, I have high-speed connections, yep. just the convenience of that. Absolutely. I'd pay extra for that as an end-user consumer. Absolutely. And but, I'd pay for the service. But I got to tell you, in fairness to AT&T, I, I think it's more, not, they ask, they're comfortable, they don't know how to monetize that data. Now, of course, AT&T has a media business. Necessity you know, is the mother CNN. of invention. If they well, don't so see I'm the saying, necessity, not then the they, they're not going to think that's about not it. Their well, it's a big mentality shift. But, yeah. but yes, but, but when you start talking about private mobility and edge, there's, there's no, no concern about personal yeah. information there. You're going yeah. in with basically a business transformation. Hey, your, your business is, is, is not, not digital. Yeah. It's not automated. Now we're going to automate that and digitize that. It's like the, the Dell booth with the beer guys. Right. right? They, they, you saw that, right? You guys, I, mean, you know, that's, that, I mean, that's, that's a, a perfect example. application. Yeah. yeah, a perfect example of how you network and use this technology. I mean, how many non-digital businesses are there that need to go digital? Like, 100% of Everyone. them, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, this, and this jewel that we have inside of Dell, uh, our global industries group, right, where we're investing really heavily in terms of what is the manufacturing uh, industry looking for, retail, yeah. finance, et cetera. So we have a CTO that came in, it would be the CTO of manufacturing. That gives us a really good opportunity to go to AT&T or to Verizon or any telco out there, right, to, to say these are the outcomes, there's Dell technology already in place, how do we connect it to your network? How do we leverage your assets, your managed, your professional services to provide a richer experience? So it's, there's, you said before, Dave, there's really no overlap between Dell and, and our telecom Yeah, partners. you guys making some serious investments here. I mean, I, I've been, I was been critical over the years of, hey, you can't just take an x86 box, put a name on it that says edge something and throw it over the fence, because that's what you were doing. And, and we like, would agree. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 but, and, of course, but that's all you had at yeah, the time. Well, and so you put some, we may not have agreed then, but, but yeah, but we you, would agree. You, you know? brought, brought some people in, you yeah. know, like Ken, who really know the business, you brought the people into the technical side, and you can really see it happening. It's not going to happen overnight. No. You know, no. I mean, it, you know, it, if I were an investor in Dell, I'd be like, okay, when are you going to start making money at this business? I'd be like, be patient. Yeah. You know, it's going to take some time. 
but look at the TAM. Yep. You know, you guys do a good, good TAM. Well, Dennis we, is a pro at this stuff. We, we've, yeah. been at, we've been at this two, three years, and we're just now coming with some real material products. You've seen our server line yes. really start to get more purpose built, really start to get in there as we've started to put out some software that allows for quicker automation, quicker deployments. We have some telcos that are using it to deploy at 10,000 locations. They're literally turning up thousands of locations a week. Um, and so yeah, we're starting to put out some real capability. Got a long way to go. A lot of exciting things on the roadmap, but to your point, it doesn't, you know, the ship doesn't turn overnight, you know. It could be um, a really meaningful portion of Dell's business. I'm, I'm excited for the day that Tom Sweet starts reporting on it. Hey, it was our telco yeah. business. Uh, the telco business, but that's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but, you know, Dell's pretty good at things like ROI. Right? I no. mean, and so you guys do a lot of planning, a lot of TAM analysis, a lot of technical analysis, bringing the ecosystem together. That's what this business needs. I, I just don't, it's, it feels unstoppable. You know, you're at this show, everybody recognizes the need to open up. Some telcos are moving faster than others. The ones that move faster are going to disrupt. They're going to probably make some mistakes, you know, but they're going to get there first. Well, we've, see, we've seen the disruptors are making some mistakes and are kind of re, they're yep. already at the phase where they're reevaluating, you know, their approach, which is great. You know, you, you learn and adjust. You know, you run into a wall, you, you make a turn. Um, and the interesting thing, one of the biggest learnings I've taken out of the show is talking to a bunch of the telcos that are a little bit more of the laggards. They're like, nope, we, we don't believe in open, we don't think we can do it, we don't have the skill set. There may be in a geo that it's hard to find the skill set. As they've been talking to us and we've been talking about, there's almost a glimmer of hope. They're not convinced yet, but they're like, well, wait, maybe we can do this. Maybe open you know, does give us choice. Maybe it can help us accelerate revenue. So it's been interesting to see a little bit of the, just a little bit, but a little bit of that We shift. all remember in 2010, 2011, you talked to banks and financial services companies about the heck, the cloud is happening. The cloud's going to yep. take over yep. the world. We're never going to go into the cloud. Yep. Now they're the biggest, you know, Capital One's launching cloud yep. businesses, and yep. Western Union, I mean, they're yeah. all in the cloud, right? I mean, it's the same thing's going to happen here. Mike, it might take a different pattern, maybe it takes a little longer, but it's, it's, it's a fate or complete. Yeah, I, I was in high school then, so I don't remember <laughs> all that, but... <laughs> but, yeah. but, the, but the Sorry, one, Dave. <laughs> wow, that was we'll a low blow, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the one thing that is for sure, there's money to be made convincing people to get off of the backs of the dinosaurs they're riding. That's right. And also, the other thing that's a certainty is that it's not easy. And because it's not easy, there's opportunity there. So yeah. I know I know it's it it, it 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 all sounds great to talk about the, the wonderful vision of the future, but I know how hard the, the road is that you have to go down to get people, especially if you're comfortable with a revenue stream, if you're comfortable running the plumbing, yeah. if you're so comfortable that you can get up on stage and say, I want more money from you to pump your con your content across my network. Yeah. I love the Netflix retort, right yeah. Dave? But it's totally Dave, and but the, the other thing is. Telco is a great business. Right? Yes. I mean, it's, they got monopolies that print money. So it, it's, rational. Right. It, it's, it's rational. It's rational, I understand. It, there's less of an incentive to move, but what's going to be the incentive is guys like Dish Networks coming in saying, we're going we're to disrupt, yep. we're going to build new apps. Right. Yep. That's right, you know? yeah. And so, well, and it's, you know, revenue acceleration, the, the board level, the CEO level know that they have to, you know, do things different. But to your point, it's just hard and there's so much gravity there. There's hundreds of years, literally, yes. of gravity of how they've operated their business. To your point, a lot of them, you know, a lot, most of them were regulated in most geos around the world at one point, right? They were government owned or government regulated entities. It's, it's a big ship to turn and it's really hard. Um, we're not claiming we can help them turn the ship overnight, but we think we can help evolve them we think we can go along with the journey, and we do think we are better together. Um, IT, the network, and the line of business. Love the strategy. Guys, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so Great much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, for Dave Nicholson, Dave Vellante here. John Furrier is in our Palo Alto studio, banging out all the news. Keep it right there, theCUBE's coverage of MWC 23. We'll be right back.